harassment. I'm not exactly in my photo mode yet. Really? That's okay. Watch your pony and bacon. I'm going to pass over this. The blueberry crumble, who's going to be the first to try it? Raspberry. Oh, raspberry crumble. I'll try it. If there's a, I wonder if there's any way to do it without getting anything dirty. I, I think Jim should try it since he opened it two years ago. He told me. Did, yeah, if there's any left, I might have. Oh, it's, it's going down the side of your chin there. So you can see the product. Wait, I, wait, Mike, lift up your, lift up oh. your, lift up your face and look at me here. Oh, yeah, I see it going down the side of your chin there. Peanut butter, jelly, and bacon? And bacon. Try that. Oh, okay. If it's a little bit strong, you may want to dump some out and add water. Hello there, young cameraman. Well, you, there's a nice shot up there if you want to get it. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. You can see it blowing up through the mountains. broken pieces of rock. This is all one solid monolith of rock that's coming over. And there's everyone else. I know what a tenderfoot is now. Y'all did it. Yeah. It's like coming into a twilight zone. The world, <laughs> you open the mountains, you come down and everybody's gone. Now we're going to Hendersonville and the streets will be empty. We, we had about 10 minutes to prepare jokes for you while you were done. It's appreciated. We're, we're Boy, these people live like kings of picnic tables. Toilets over there. Mm -hmm. Not the Boy Scout camp you remember. Or wait, we didn't go to Boy Scout camp, did we? That's why we still like hiking. <laughs> so, what do you, so what do you think? Was the, was the hike worth it? Or was it what you thought it might be? Or? Yes, it was in the realm of, of expectations. Uh, uh, was that, it uh, something other than just physical labor? Or <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It, it, you know, for me, it, it really is. You, you've taken me out on two hikes now, and uh, you probably are not aware, but uh, I, I make a parallel between the two. Mm -hmm. First time was a change in life because Jan had left me, and I was depressed. Mm -hmm. And that you were trying to give me, and did give me, uh, something to focus on for a little while, other than, you know, being single. Mm -hmm. um, this time around, I have another change in life, almost as dramatic, not mm -hmm. quite as dramatic, mm -hmm. where the house that I've invested five years of labor in is now, long, now sold. Mm -hmm. I've accomplished the goals that I wanted to in the house, and now I have no don't know what to do <laughs> with mm -hmm. the accomplishment of those goals. And realizing that, you know, that again, this is now another uh, milestone in my life. 
<laughs> toilet paper, where's the toilet paper? It's been in your pack for three days. I go, it's not in my pack. He's looking all over and finally it turns out that it was in... My pack. Know, Michael's pack. So he goes running off in the woods clutching his toilet paper. I had offered him like two Playtex personal towelettes and he goes, I'm a guy, I can't use those. I'm like, why? What's going to happen? So uh, that didn't I, work out. I said because I need about 12 of them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead, but after he started going on and on about the toilet paper, I was kind of enjoying him going spastic about it. So I thought, I'll just let him go. Where was the toilet paper? In my backpack. Oh. Which I was pretty yeah, sure oh, it but was. there was another facet to the, the, the toilet paper thing. We originally had two full rolls of toilet paper, but the first oh, the first morning, Michael you. went down the hill and he came back and said, Here, and he, he said, I need a little bit of help. And he handed me a candy-coated roll of toilet paper. <laughs> so what do you think? Was it what you thought it would be? What did you get out of the hike? No, nothing like what I thought it would be. I think that if I really knew what it was going to be like, I probably would have chickened out. Mm -hmm. um, I needed a lot of support um, halfway through the first day. Just going up and up and up was brutal. Mm -hmm. um, but fortunately, after that, everything was better. I'm, I'm glad that I did it and I would do it again, but at least now um, I have some better ideas of, of how I might go about it and um, um, and what it was really like. I mean, the, I, I thought the camping out was going to be bad. So Jim, what did you hope to get out of this trip? Um, well, I had a couple of different goals. Uh, first, I wanted to have a successful hike, which I think we did, but nobody bailed out and it worked. Um, I had to juggle wanting to have a successful three-day hike with the needs of the different hikers of different levels of skill and endurance. Um, Shari was perhaps the most vulnerable um, hiker, um, but I also thought I thought Matt was going to be uh, vulnerable. Um, but I was surprised in that uh, he led uh, most of the time hiking and he had no trouble carrying his weight. And then he volunteered to go back and uh, pick up, you know, Reed and Shari's packs um, when they were struggling, and I was really surprised by uh, by that. And he also he he approached me about formulating some uh, backup plans, Plan B and Plan C, if uh, if they can't if they could not complete the hike. Um, he really seemed um, more mature than I expected him to be. Um, and I also had to balance that with um, my desire to have a good cinema. Cinematographic outcome. I wanted to produce a longer movie here, a more of a documentary than just a uh, a, uh, a a trail um, video diary. Um, so um, uh, I didn't want to get any in anybody's face too much with the camera, but for the most part, everybody was was agreeable. Um, you can tell Matt didn't want to be interviewed much on the camera, but um, I think everybody else cooperated pretty well. Um, so I think it was a great success um, on, on all those fronts. And, uh